<laughs> hey guys, this is Jess with Coastal, and welcome to Chick Chat Live on the farm. As you can see, we are at the farm today, and if you couldn't hear, there's a bunch of geese flying over at the moment, so hopefully we don't get something on our heads. <laughs> but uh, no, so we are here tonight to talk getting started with chickens, uh, from that to uh, advanced poultrying, I guess you would say. I don't know if that's a fancy enough word for you. But we have our experts from uh, pure, uh, neutral. Oh, I almost said the word there. Oh, 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 the word. I know. Fire me. <laughs> from Neutrina and VSI. So I'm going to let them introduce themselves. You guys know me as Jess, and that is my name. And uh, Brian, let's start with you. So I'm Brian Dodd. I am with Neutrina. I'm the sales rep for uh, Western Washington, Western Oregon. And I've been with Neutrina for about a year and a half now. I'm Darcy Pogue. I'm with Veterinary Service Incorporated. And I just celebrated my 28th year with the company. Whoa! Yeah. 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 Good job. That's great. Longevity. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very cool. And I'm Annie Hood. I'm with Neutrina as well. I've been with uh, Neutrina for about uh, four years now and pretty excited to be here with you guys. Well, cool. No, thank you guys for joining us. Uh, these guys know their stuff about poultry. And I know that Darcy raises uh, birds. You have, I mean, what all do you have? I, I have a mixed bag. Mixed bag. <laughs> <laughs> <Mixed bag. laughs> Buff Orpingtons, Australorps, the Easter egg hens, you name it. Everything. A little bit of everything. And you've been, you've had birds for a long time, haven't you? I was raised with birds, yeah, and I've never lost that. <laughs> no, Brian great. does too. You, I've you, had, you've I've had, had quite a few birds. Yeah, mm -hmm. no, yeah. we we always raised uh, dual purpose ones, um, so that we had eggs, and then eventually we had stew. Uh, so <laughs> so it just it changed every well, year. Well, hey, they're a well-rounded bird, as you can see. A couple of the girls are joining us here, and uh, we may have thrown them a treat, but uh, they're uh, you know high maintenance. But hey, we are coming to you live from the farm tonight, and I'm going to be monitoring questions. If any of you guys have questions on anything with poultry, uh, from getting started with chicks to specific feeds, maybe some issues, um, to meat birds, all the way to eggs. I mean, we could probably even give you a few good recipes for some eggs, too. <laughs> um, then feel free to ask. We're going to be monitoring that right here, and we will try to answer those uh, live on, the, on, on this video. So, to get started, really, you know, at Coastal, we carry a lot of different chicks. So, you're going to come to Coastal, you're going to find the chicks that you want, and then take them home. But before they get home, there's a few things that we need to make sure that you guys have set up. So, I mean, what are some of the key things to having a good setup at home so when you bring those chicks, they're going to thrive and grow and do the best they can? You want to have your setup complete before, they, before you bring them home. <coughs> So you want to have the shavings installed, you want to have the brooder light on, the waters, the heat lamp. Um, you want to have their feed ready, water ready. Size is important with your waters. We like to keep shallow waters for young birds. But you really need to have that brooder set up, warmed up, and ready to go before you bring the babies home. And then when you, when you do arrive with them, I um, like to put in probiotic and electrolyte. And have that in the water so that when you get them to the house you can just dip their beaks and get them started right away and that that's pretty key your heat lamp will you, you could use a thermometer always and that needs to be at the level of the chick itself so you know where where they need to be because they need to be somewhere between 95 and 98 degrees when they first are brought home as young ba baby mm -hmm. birds a cold chick is a dead chick, so we've got yeah. to have them stay warm. Well, and, and just one thing, too. Um, make sure that the box or the thing that you're putting the heat lamp and the chicks in is not something that will melt or catch on catch fire. Catch on fire, right. Because exactly. we have had some tragic stories where people have used, like, those Tupperware bin, or not Tupperware, but, like, those totes, totes, totes and, stuff, mm -hmm. and they end up melting or right. then, yes. you know. Yeah. Something that's just cardboard and gets too hot and it will burst into flames. So. You always want to use one of these heat lamps that has a ceramic base because you're using a 250 watt lamp. Yeah. And they get too hot for something with a plastic base. Mm -hmm. So, and I prefer to, I usually just toss the clamp and I suspend it with the little just, loop. Yeah, and, and, that, and that, so it can't to get To be bumped. honest, that's I think what a lot of people do because it's easier to suspend it and have it there mm -hmm. at mm -hmm. the right height than have the thing fall over in the night or do something yeah. else. And a lot safer. A puppy bumps it or yeah. a child bumps it and gets burnt on it. We don't want that to happen. No, either. exactly. So, so 
we have a few questions coming in, but let, let, while you're on the lamps, before we come answer these questions, is, you know, we have clear lamps and red lamps. Mm -hmm. What is the best? I mean, six one half dozen the other. Is it what's what's? I, I'm a, I'm a preferential to the red heat lamp, and I know you're nodding <laughs> with me. Yeah. Um, red heat lamps take the aggressiveness out of the birds mm -hmm. yep. to begin with, and if somebody does happen to get picked and there's a little blood spot, the red color helps mask it. It hides it, so they don't keep beating up on one another. Because chicks and adult birds are very hierarchical, <laughs> and once somebody gets hurt, they keep pecking on them. <laughs> And then I do want to point out also when you're at the store and you're shopping for your chicks, mm -hmm. it is best to pick up your chicks last. If you're going to yeah. shop mm -hmm. for the next hour in the store, while it's fun to hear the peeping in the cart, <laughs> um, it, you're giving that chick more opportunity to get cold, yeah. which yeah. Right. a cold chick is not. Not a dead chick. <laughs> yeah. So exactly. if your chick could be the last spot you go before checkout, that really is going to be better for the chicks. Gotcha. Excellent point. Yeah. Okay. And too, like the coastal team is fantastic, right? If you're maybe a little lost on, like she said, there's different sizes, everything. They do have this really cool beginner kit as well. It's a one box shop. Um, if you just have a few chicks, if you're going to get more than that, obviously you're going to need maybe bigger Something waters, bigger. bigger feeders or multiple. Um, but making sure you're getting what you need for how many is key as well. Like, you know, if you're going to get a small amount, um, you only need, you know, a small feeder and a small water. But if you're yes. going to get multiples, maybe you need multiple brooders, maybe just remember you can't squeeze too many um, in one brooder as well because you can't they can't be too crowded you got to make sure you have enough space they get they get really kind of mean with each they other do. Yeah. Crowded, <laughs> yes. to yes. say the least and so oh go ahead sorry that's waters the, the size of the water with chicks is really critical mm -hmm. because they they will run into it they're mm -hmm. going to get yeah. wet and then here we go a cold chick. chick is a cold chick and a cold <laughs> chick is a dead chick and we don't want that to happen so you can actually put pebbles or um, marbles in the basis of some of these waters yeah i've seen people use uh little um like uh larger nuts off of bolts mm -hmm. and stuff too mm -hmm. that yep. are brand new yep. clean yep. And yeah, they, that way they only get their little ankles yep. wet they don't get the whole body wet right. so yeah so uh, we're, we have quite a few questions that came in but before we do that so just a quick overview again uh lamp feeder waters Good bedding. Good, good bedding. bedding. Always, good. always hardwood. Never cedar. Right. That's right. No, yep. the Don't oil, use cedar. the cedar can cause a lot of issues. Respiratory. And stuff. Correct. Yeah. Yep. yep. Yes. And yeah. And, feed. and a good, and then good probiotic good and electrolyte, and, and then and then good feed. feed. And good feed. Good feed. Good feed. Because I want to get these. We've had a, a good uh, amount of questions here, real quick. And uh, let's start. So, um, looks like Kathy has a question. She goes, "I have a month-old chick, Americana. She is." Uh, cross beak. Uh, what extra nutrition can I give her? Um, let's see. Uh, I can't put her down. She's part of se a group of seventeen. Um, probably the good feed. You guys, good feed. Just having feed. a good chick feed but is going to be key. Having a deeper with cross beak, they have a hard time getting because their beaks are crossed. Literally, oh, right. they have a hard time picking up the feed. So with a bird like that, you may want to go more with something feed. that's just more like a bowl. So they can oh. just fill their mouths. They up. just fill their mouth more. Mm -hmm. and, yeah. So not a shallow feeder, more nope. of a deeper, a deeper feeder. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Cool. Um, Jeff has a question. Why aren't his chickens laying? Well, Jeff, that might be. That's kind of a loaded. That's a big question. <laughs> that's a big question. <laughs> so, well, we want to answer that. But um, are you? I mean, how old are the chicks? I mean, it could be a lot of different things like that. I mean, right. it could be not getting to that right age, you know, uh, could be the whole lamp thing and the whole night and day cycle and everything, Correct. the amount of light they're getting. Yep. So if you can give us a few more kind of information Details. about your chicks, then we and can what you're feeding. That. Yeah, so yeah what, and what, what you're, you're feeding, feeding is yeah. important. Yeah. Absolutely. Old, what you're feeding, or how many treats you're giving, like mm -hmm. there's a lot of things that and can lighting. go into in the lighting. Lighting is huge. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I mean, I know it is April, we are spring, but yeah, yep, right. definitely in that if time they're, of year. If they're older hens, they may not right. quite be ready there ready yet. Either. Yeah, too. Yeah. Um, let's see, where was the other ones? Uh, Chris, oh, you, we asked, uh, we already answered that question on brooder lamps, white versus red, so I hope you caught that. Perfect. Um, oyster, uh, Becky Dunn has a question. She goes, oyster shell is hard to come by. Is it okay to grind up eggshells to add to their food? And I know there's differing views on this, but <laughs> do you want to kind of so touch on that? <laughs> so, 
If you are doing it purely for calcium, one, don't add it to the food, have it in a separate dish because your fee already has a calcium in it and adding it to the food, you're just diluting the food feed that we already have put there. Two, it is really difficult to grind up a eggshell to get it to the right size that it will actually be used by a chicken. Uh, so for the most part, they just go through and aren't really beneficial. Oyster shell is substantially better at being broken down within the bird. Um, and then there's the possibility that you are increasing the likelihood that you end up with egg eaters, mm -hmm. which is oh, a impossible. It's not it's hard impossible. To break it. it's, yeah. really it's really difficult. Yeah. Really almost impossible. <laughs> right. it's, that's yeah. where I was that, going, a, and I was yeah. like, crock pot of fence. Is yeah, what it's right. a crock pot of fence. Exactly. <laughs> so so yeah. I would stick to trying to find some oyster shell. I know that it, it has been in short supply recently, but that's that's really going to be the better option. Yeah. And really, for the price, the bang for your buck, sometimes it's just easier if you can find it. Um, I, in a bag, I think we have a small bag around here somewhere. It in does last you, um, yeah, it, last, it does <laughs> last you uh, a pretty good, you know, that bag should last you time in the, the, the hard work of doing all that. Usually if you can find it, it'll be easier. Yeah. And, and a lot of times I think what I find is, um, I always keep that free range for them, mm -hmm. yep. the grit and the oyster shell both, because it's, it's inexpensive. Yep. It doesn't go bad. It mm -hmm. doesn't get stale. Yeah. And yeah. it's, it's beneficial to them. Yep. Yeah. I like to compare it to a salt block because because right. you know when cows, cattle, horses, whatever, you keep it in there, it might last you six months, um, but they go to it when they need to. Hence why Brian said don't mix it with a feed because maybe you have a hen go up to the feeder and she gets a piece of oyster shell and all of a sudden she's like, oh, that's not what I needed. And then mm -hmm. she kind of gets detoured from going to the feeder. So we don't want that habit to start as well. Very good. Uh, so jumping back to Jeff's question, he said they're one to two year olds, not laying anymore, and they're super spoiled. <laughs> so maybe they're overspoiled. Right. You so, know. That's, yeah. I mean, I hate yes. to say that because we, we all want to spoil our animals, but yes, they we have might too have cracked this open, right? Yeah. 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 So, yes. so that's a very real possibility. Um, layer feeds are designed to hit a specific protein point that will give you the most bang for your buck in that egg possibility or in that egg cycle. And if you are giving too many treats, potentially, um, you are lowering that overall protein that the bird is digesting. And so it can end up actually decreasing the amount of eggs and slowing down your egg cycle. And if you want to continue with high treats, we do at Coastal sell um, some higher protein layer feeds that you can look at that will help bring that back. So there's a Country Companion High Pro, um, which is designed to be fed with a lot of treats. Um, it even has a breakdown on the bag that you can cut it with scratch and it tells you how much to cut it with. Or there's Country Feeds Egg Producer, um, which is that same possibility. So if you increase the protein yield, you will probably bring those eggs back into normal cycle. Well, like you mentioned it, and we've talked about in some of our other live videos where, you know, that, uh, I can't remember the name of it, but it was that higher protein. So if they were free ranging or other stuff, right. You could kind of give more of a consistent, um, that was my children. <laughs> um, uh, more of a consistent protein level all the time. Right. So, yes. Just part of being live on the farm. <laughs> what's going to happen at the Rob's house. Cool. The, the lighting, um, too, is yes. really particularly important. Yes. This time of year, we're kind of just breaking that threshold of the, the 13 hours of daylight, which is critical. 13 to 16 hours is maximized, unless you're doing supplemental lighting. Yeah. That's true. So maybe, yeah, they're just coming out to where the, the days are getting longer and they're now going to start kind of getting into getting to where they're back lane. And two, also, we didn't really ask is the breed. Um, right. I mean, we might, I mean, if I'm not sure if you're a breed, maybe you have a lower um, producing um, breed, breed that maybe that's, that's also a yeah. factor yeah. as well. That's a good point. Yeah. Very good point. Cool. Well, hey, uh, Jeff, if there's anything else you want to add to that question, feel free to type it. We're watching that and we can help you answer that. Um, Elizabeth uh, Biddle has a good question here. What is the best way to transition chicks from the brooder to the chicken coop? And kind of to add on to that, when is the best time? Is there like a cut and dry age or should we look more at weather or should we, you know, what, what should we look at there? All the above. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well done. Oh, yes. They, the birds, when you transition new birds into a flock, they need to be about the same size as the adult birds that are already in there. And um, you want to put like numbers so we had this conversation earlier about 
five birds in with 300 doesn't work very well. No. So yeah. you want to, you if you have five birds and you need to add five birds, that's the way to do it. Do it slowly. Let them see each other if they can. Um, I have a really cool way of sli sliding a barrier in. Yeah. I've, I've used a dog crate before. Yep. You in, can look at each other. And <laughs> well, that way they can kind of get used to each other. Right. right. Do that. Absolutely. Right. Now, if you're if you're not mixing them with another flock, just taking them out to their own pen. I mean, Mother Nature is going to dictate that. Okay, that's mostly. what I figure. It's yeah. mainly going to be the temperature because, like, yep. you know, yes. you want, don't want them to be cold. You well, want them to be fully full feathered. feathered. Yeah. Yep. yeah. Yes. Fully yep. feathered, and like you want to make sure you're not going from the brooder where it's you know a nice toasty summertime Arizona to the Northwest yeah. outside. <laughs> yeah. um, so making sure they're fully feathered and they can, you know, they're not making such a drastic temperature change from that, yep. you know, but. Gotcha. Again, too, in introducing them with like the dog crates and things like that. Also nighttime, um, yes. Yes. chickens are kind of night blind. So like I've had great success with um, introducing them the where yeah. you do, you do it in the middle of the night to where you kind of move them around and you, this is after some time of introducing mm -hmm. them with mm -hmm. the barrier. Um, they'll wake up the next morning and they're like, hey, are you there? Are you there? You're You're there. Are you good? <laughs> um, and then the next day they'll kind of do their pecking order and they should be, should be good. And then Darcy was pointing to this uh, scratch block here. So this, when you're introducing new birds into existing birds, if you throw one of these out there, um, it'll really distract them because birds tend to be very food motivated. And so As you can tell. They, have <laughs> yeah. To, yeah. they have to pick on something that's yeah. necessary. Yep. And if you put something out there for them to pick on, it will de decrease the likelihood. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, very yeah. good. Yep. Cool. Um... We'll take a couple more questions here and then kind of jump back onto our uh, order here. So, uh, Amy Brown has a long question here. I'll read this out. Hi, I have a mixed flock of seven pullets, two olive eggers, uh, uh, one Americana, one black sex links, and silver lace wine dot, um, a speckled Sussex. Everyone was fine and getting along until two weeks ago when my Sussex started to be obsessing over the Americana and pulling out her black feathers. Um, I removed them, the injured one immediately, and the next day the Sus Sussex was back at it pecking the other one, so I've removed her too. I spent a week alone in isolation yesterday, was the third day of reintroducing her, when she broke some tail feathers one of the olive eggers and, uh, of one of the olive eggers and caused some bleeding. What should I do with the Sussex now? Um, and don't worry about the long thing. You gave us lots of, it was a good detail. Yeah. detail. Yes. That's good to know. Yeah. It helps us um, expand upon this. So kind of what can she do there? I mean, is, sorry, is that one just going to be a jerk the whole time? Or, I mean, what's... <laughs> There's always one bird that, that tends to be the top top yeah. of the flock, and it might be it might be one that needs to be removed if it continues. Yeah. Um, and once you once you take one out of the flock and try and put it back in, the whole hierarchy the has order. to be has started, started over again. Started over again. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, so that's, that's probably why it was coming back and doing mm -hmm. that again. Right. So, yeah. So that could have just been the top chick, um, and if she's the top hen in, in the house, she has to make sure that everyone understands that she's number one mm -hmm. and keeps them in their place. Mm -hmm. Now, if there's an actual injury, then not only will she pick on them, everyone will pick on them, so that is a good Correct. time to remove them. Something like a scratch block could be beneficial um, to try and distract them, or a mirror sometimes will help be a little distracting but if she's just a jerk then it, it might be, be removed. Yeah. 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 yeah sometimes you have yeah. to yeah. 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 yeah especially if they're a pet but it, yeah. it might be best yeah. for everyone if, and yeah calling doesn't mean just killing right. calling i mean giving away to someone for, five someone yeah. else that wants yep. to separate it from the other ones and just you know yeah or if you can increase the size of your run-in or something like that that could could possibly help, help too. With that. My favorite saying is, <clears throat> as you expand your flock, the beatings will be distributed <laughs> over more bodies. <laughs> <laughs> so it's less likely to have damage yeah. <laughs> a long way. Um, so last question here before we go on. Um, Stacy uh, has a question. I just lost a two-year-old Isa Brown to being egg-bound. Mm -hmm. I feel like I feed my mm -hmm. girls all the appropriate things. Was it was this caused by the breeds, or what can I do um, in future to help avoid this? Uh, she was such a great hen, and sorry about your loss. That's always hard to hear. Yes. Um, and she said, "P.S. She treated her for a couple weeks without success." So is that something that's, you know, more than likely to happen with certain breeds, or is that based on you know feet or what what goes on there? I think it's more based on just a, 
a bird, a mm -hmm. bad luck, a bad, a bad, bad luck, bad yeah. luck. Bad yes, luck. there's yeah. really um, seems like there's nothing there's no you can do to prevent it. There's specific. no, mm -hmm. yeah. And the treatment is very difficult and very time consuming and incredible props for trying, um, yeah. but it's not yeah. often successful. So yeah. I'm really sorry for your loss. Yeah, that's yeah, hard. Absolutely. So what, yeah. just for my knowledge, what is egg bound exactly? I mean, is that just getting stopped up in a sense and they can't pass exactly. more eggs out? And so it's okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times what happens when it becomes fatal is the egg will break and damage oh. the internal. And cause, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, so, some, okay. some people will use a syringe with mm -hmm. no needle on it, but just a, like a 3 cc syringe and use mineral oil around mm -hmm. the vent and try and flush it out. Flush it out. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. But it's, it's not usually that successful. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. That's that's the key is like to make sure to not break the egg. Uh, right. If that does right. happen, um, you then know, soaking in a warm bath, bath. and mm -hmm. getting things soft without trying to force anything right. is the key. And that's why, unfortunately, sometimes it's it's not successful. But those things are worth trying. It's just maybe right. what you were doing. Uh, but sometimes it's not very. Yeah. That's yeah. One of those hard things. It yes. Is. Yeah. It is. So, okay, uh, moving on here for a little bit. So now we've brought our chicks home. Um, we have got their brooder set up and everything. We have a couple different options as far as feeding your chicks. Yes. I mean, as far as getting them started um, all the way through. Um, you know, we can start, let's start with organic real quick, just so I can talk about that is at a lot of our coastal stores, we have, um, some organic birds available and these are from birth so like we've talked about on some other videos is if you want to truly be organic you you can't just grab an ordinary no. chicken and bring it home start feeding it organic feed and have right. it be organic you need to start from organic so those are available at quite a few of our stores but if you're at a store that doesn't have one um you know we can special order those for you talk to the animal health lead talk to one of the managers and they can help you on that and same with um, those for layers and broilers as well so what, after they've done that, what kind of options do we have for organic feed? Let's start there. So with us, our organic feed is we have Nature Smart. Um, so that is going to be a 20% chick starter. This is something like uh, Jess was saying, you would pick up from the organic take and that's what they're feeding there at Coastal. Um, you would pick up a bag of Nature Smart and take it home. And this is gonna be something they will be fed um, from beginning until usually around 16 weeks or start of lay. Mm -hmm. And this will be, it's a certified USDA organic and non-GMO um, chick feed. And then if you were raising uh, meat birds, they would just stay on this until time of harvest. So whatever type of meat bird you have will dictate your type of harvest. If it's a Red Ranger, Freedom Ranger, it's further out. If it's a Cornish Cross, it's pretty quick. Uh, <laughs> but they would stay on that from day one through uh, until harvest and if it's a Cornish cross specifically after the first three days you would start a 12 hours of feeding 12 hours off feed 12 hours on 12 hours off the easiest way to accomplish that is actually just to not fill the feeder in the evening just fill it in the morning and make sure it doesn't run out too soon um, so that way in the evening they don't have the ability to overeat so they're not getting too big yeah and be ready when you get those the white <laughs> yep. right broilers they are ready in 46 and one half days very specific yeah yeah no, yeah they do they okay so fast. um moving from organic let's just kind of move down um like uh you have a line of natural stuff as well like it's not full-fledged organic uh but it's it's different than just your normal feed so what what's in the natural kind of line and what how does that differ from just regular chicken feed? So our NatureWise line is um, all natural. And it is, it has all of the bells and whistles that you're going to want when you're introducing chicks. So you have your pre and probiotic in there. You have a flock shield, which is just an immune system booster. 80% of your immune system is developed within your gut. So to have a good feed going in, you greatly increase the likelihood that everything is going to go well. And then this has the ability to come in medicated and non-medicated. So that's something that every person has to decide for themselves. If you do have a history of coccidiosis on your farm, medicated is definitely the way to go. If you don't have a history, then you can go through some pros and cons okay. of medicated versus non-medicated. Gotcha. And it's important to remember that the medication doesn't get into the tissue of the right. bird. It doesn't get into the egg. It's a in one end and out the other, mm -hmm. no harm, no foul. 
literally. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So it's it's a very safe feed. And very safe. We are prone in the Willamette Valley in particular to, co yeah. to having coccidiosis. Mm -hmm. And um, once it gets started, it's hard we don't start. have anything to treat it with now. No. At this point. And it it spreads like wildfire and it's deadly most yeah. of the time. Yeah. And so. it, it lives in your soil. Yep. So if you've had it in a cow, mm -hmm. Great. It's there for your chickens. If you've had it in a goat, it's yep. there for your chickens because every everything can get it. Wild um, animals carry it. Yeah. Yep. So, so if, if there's a history, absolutely go Medicaid in. Yeah. Cool. Well, while we're on feed, then stepping up to kind of just what I'd call general feed, and you know, um, what are the options there? I mean, we like with everything else we have from start to finish. So once you start them on a starter, you can pretty much take it all the way to the end and start keep feeding that same. So with the NatureWise line, you would at 16 weeks or at onset of lay, you would switch over to a layer feed. And there are a lot of varieties of layer feeds within NatureWise. Um, there's your standard layer pellets, layer crumbles, but there's also hardy hen, which is gonna be soy free and have additional omega threes and sixes um, to make a, harder, a heart healthy egg. Um, there's feather fixer, which will also add color to well not add color but bring out the color within your feathers um, that can be used as a layer so there's a lot of layer options within the naturewise line all of which are going to have those beautiful pre and probiotics all of which have that flock shield to bring you through um, and just keep you healthy and then if you were raising a meat bird with the naturewise line you actually start them out on meat bird and then keep them on meat bird the whole way through. And again, after three days, you do the 12 on, 12 off with Cornish Cross. Mm -hmm. Very good. Um, let me see. I thought I had a question here and I couldn't get it to pull up. Um, oh no, it was just someone replying to somebody. So that's kind of covered. I mean, really, like you said, there's we have feeds for all levels of uh, anything you're doing with your birds, like you said, we have stuff to help fix uh, the feathers when they molt. Mm -hmm. um, I know it's jumping ahead a little bit, but molting, you know, people might freak out when they see their birds molt for the first time. They'll walk out one day and be like, ah, what happened? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> but yes. it's nothing to worry about. So what, can you guys explain molting, what the process is and, and why we might, why birds go through that and why we might want to, you know, help them out a little bit so they don't look so naked <laughs> <laughs> every bird kind of goes through it in a different fashion some some just drop feathers like nobody's business um, others lose a little bit around their neck and their back and the chest yep. yeah and um, it's natural process it's a regenerational process of putting in new feathers and and it's it's normal some birds go through it their first year most of them are usually the second year when mm -hmm. they start to molt the pullets don't what i was going to point out yeah. i have a lot of people call me they're like this didn't happen last year and i was yeah. like did you get your chicks like you know yeah. usually yeah. the first fall you don't see it it's the next fall yeah. um so just remember yes there's not some weird disease going around no. um no. It, is, it is a natural process and they come back it's not like chick pattern baldness or anything <laughs> <laughs> they, they, they regenerate and you're all good i do i do want to point out because you made a point is like if you guys have little kids is if you know during molting they're very very sensitive so like mm -hmm. if you go grab them or pick them up and stuff um, sometimes that can prevent their feathers to grow back in certain spots because those oh. it'll so just be careful if you maybe notice that you know you're during molting you guys picked them up a lot and then the next you know when they came back they're missing a little bit it will happen it'll come back again the following time but they are really fragile kind of in that time and then to point out also they stop laying eggs during molt and that's yes. to be expected. They're using their protein to build new feathers and it needs to be used elsewhere. Um, so that's totally normal and give them a little break. They'll get, <laughs> yeah. they'll get back to being productive members of society soon. So yeah. you need to put that energy into growing those feathers. Right. Yes, that's right. Yep. Cool. So you had mentioned something um, about... Uh, Chick pattern baldness. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, as you can tell, uh, some of us have. I don't, uh, I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> I'm good. I don't know. You know yeah, I'm good. You guys yeah. just beating a lot of the feather fingers. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> got the chance but we also do have the country companion oh chick yes starter. Oh, yeah. i want to make sure i point that out um this is a 50 pound bag of medicated chick starter um, that's at your guys's coastal as well and with the nature wise and the nature smart there is 
chick all the way to layer to specifics, whether it's a high protein or a meat bird, um, there's a ton of options. But I just want to make sure I gave I gave them a shout out over there as well. Very good. So, you know, we were talking about laying and chicks not laying and all that kind of stuff. What is the, I mean, with the typical bird, and it can vary by breed, I'm sure too, you know, how many eggs can someone expect on average to get in a day? And when should they be worried like, like something isn't working or that, you know, it, it depends a lot on the breed, right. honestly, yeah. um, and the lighting and whatnot. But um, when a when a hen is mature, she has what looks like a cluster of grapes, which are where the, the eggs are mm -hmm. housed, where they start. And each little follicle breaks off and goes through the whole po process of getting the shell put on it and the whole albumin and everything. And um, that takes an average of most birds, when they're young, a day, a uh, 24-hour cycle. And a lot of it depends on, like I say, the breed of bird. Right. Huge, the, there's huge differences yes. in that yes. um, as far as their laying proudness. But when, when we put them under lights to, year round mm -hmm. to keep them forced to lay, they, they run out of production faster. Oh, okay. Because yeah. so they use those eggs could, up and they yeah. don't regenerate. <laughs> the, those little grape cluster goes yep. away. Once yeah. it's out, then that's it. Yeah. Hen Henopause is real. It is. Henopause. They, Henopause. they, they, yeah. they yeah. run out of eggs at a, at a set point. And yeah. so yes. if you're forcing them to lay more, you're just, just forcing that. To you know that it's quicker. coming sooner. Sooner. Yeah. Yep. Gotcha. And the big thing is too, if you're if you're looking for, you know, hey, I want that large brown egg, and I want as many as I can get. Um, the team at Coastal, I know there's there's going to be information on the tanks, right? right. If you were looking for this high production egg, you're going to look at this breed. If you do want that, um, Banties are really cute, but uh, they're not the best as far as large brown eggs and multiple. You know, you're not going to get a lot of them. Um, so just know. Knowing when you go into your coastal store and what breeds and kind of knowing the goal, like, you know, Banties and Silkies, they're great for kids, they're great for 4-H, all that stuff. But if you're looking to get a lot of eggs for the omelet in the morning, you might want to throw in some, you know, Bard Rocks, some Red Rhode Island Reds, or, you know, throw in anything yeah, else that's going to be that higher production yeah. um, egg yeah. bird. And we actually have a great resource on our website, coastalcountry.com. If you uh, go on there and search for chicks, um, there's a great page. We have a bunch of resources on videos, blog articles, a bunch of different things. And then we list out those birds and, you know, if they're a very productive egg layer or just a normal egg layer, yep. or yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah. So it can kind of help you pick the birds to best suit your flock and your backyard yep. and what your needs are. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Definitely research, yes. research your yep. breeds. Cause yep. like yep. if you know what you want going in, it makes it so much easier. Right. If you want blue eggs, then, then you got, yeah. there's a specific area <laughs> for you. Yes. If you want brown eggs, there's a different area. If you just want cool looking chickens that don't lay a whole lot, there's, <laughs> You're get there's some that layer. That too. <laughs> yeah. 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 And, and two, if there's something that we don't stock normally, um, we can special order through a bunch of our distributors that, that in the hatcheries that we get those chicks from. So, you know, just ask one of the managers, ask the lead in the animal health department and they can help you get those figured out and get those on our normal regular shipment so and that's that's nice to have so because yeah. yeah. it's hard to carry you know oh, there's chicks for there's everybody it's hard to carry <laughs> right we, the whole you store be full of chicks google chicken breeds i think oh. that <laughs> <laughs> the line the list is very endless so yep. yeah it really is yeah <laughs> so jumping back to eggs you know talking about the eggs a little bit we've had a few chickens once in a while where you'll get these soft eggs that come out you know, it's just like it's they'll be laying normal. All of a sudden, you have it's really cool. But what what causes that? Is that something to worry about? Is that something that's just normal, or is that just part of the process didn't get done? Part know? of the process didn't get done. There you go. I yeah. call it a misfire. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and and they do happen. You know, sometimes yeah. they'll just come out with the the little inner membrane on it, and they look like a reptile egg. Mm -hmm. They're just yeah. soft. Yeah. <laughs> So, and, and sometimes you'll get extra shell on them. Yes, right. I was going to say too, if you're if you're new to the chicken world, right, and this is maybe the first year you're going to get some eggs, they might be a little wonky for the first couple times, and, and that's okay. Sometimes it takes a couple times for the girls to get kind of a normalcy. You might get a little, you know, funny things, double shells or a little yeah. bit size. Or like crazy itty -bitty. small, little tiny like little starter eggs. 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 Yes. They're so, so cute. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. So that is, it sometimes tiny takes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Very yes. tiny. so don't be, that does sometimes it takes them a few, you know, a little bit to kind of get going. Trial and error. Trial and error. There it is. Yeah. Yes. Yep. 
Well, good. So while we're on eggs, then you know we've kind of been moved over to this and talking about eggs because that is one of the major areas that reasons that we all have chickens. You know, we want to yep. control the egg production so we can have our own eggs, and it's fun to give our kids something to do to go collect those eggs. And when we bring, I know I'm I, Darcy knows where I'm going with this. <laughs> I know where you're headed. <laughs> so you're do I. Soapbox. <laughs> yeah, soapbox. No, so stand up. No. Oh wait, she was standing. Sorry. <laughs> no. But, and there is differing views and very strong there opinions are. on both sides. But uh, washing, to wash, to not wash, to just scrub, to use, I mean, to refrigerate, all those things. To not you know, refrigerate. there's all kinds yeah. of stuff we can do there. Well, but at a bare minimum, what do you, before you get on your soapbox, at a bare minimum, what do you think people should be doing or not doing? And then explain, you know, some of your stuff. Well, you want to keep your bedding clean. Yeah. But you know your oh, chickens are gonna sure. your chickens are gonna walk through things, <laughs> and you're gonna have, unfortunately, one of the side effects of having birds is you have little wild birds, and then you have some rodents that show up, mm -hmm. and they all carry E. coli, Salmonella, bacteria, yep. and so my my personal opinion, and people do differ on it. Um, if I get an egg that I pull out of the the nest box, basically, I take it into the house and I can choose to either refrigerate or not refrigerate because yep. they will they will last on the counter right. for a couple well, of weeks if you do, unrefrigerated if you, if you refrigerate you don't want to go back the opposite way correct right. you no, can't no. go back, you can't you can't go back. back. Yeah. Yeah. no no so but my my personal preference is to wash and you have to wash in hot water otherwise you drive the bacteria in through the pores mm -hmm. and then you contaminate the egg but i do prefer to wash before i put them in the fridge because refrigerator kicks the fan on yep, and if there's circuit. any any bad thing on that outside of that egg that you can't see because you don't see smell or taste bacteria or salmonella or e coli it's now circulating through your refrigerator and onto your leftovers so uh, it's my personal soapbox no, that i love to get on well like you said you know i mean there's like you said if you're gonna you can choose to refri you know in other countries the uh, u.s is the, one of the only countries that i think we refrigerate eggs. Yeah. right yeah you know in other countries but you can't go back the other way because uh -uh. temperature that's where you can get bacteria growth and things is when exactly. the temperature changes like but and, um so just so people understand, and when you're weaning wash, though, we're not using like Dawn dish soap no. or whatever. No, I mean, you don't want to use the scented soap at yeah. all because it will make the egg taste like when you crack it open, it'll taste like you're eating fish. Yeah, no, it's it really gross. It just, yeah. It's really gross because it, 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 on the it egg, permeates. there's it's it's porous, <laughs> mm -hmm. you know, and yeah. so those things. They, what's the? I'll no, I'll say it wrong. What's the coating? That, the bloom. We oh. the bloom. I was like, okay. oh no! Yeah. If you didn't ask me, I had it. <laughs> <laughs> It's called the bloom, and it, yep. it's really not antibacterial. It's nothing like that. All it does is it just proofs the egg. It seals it. Yeah. And if you're concerned about washing your eggs and having them get old too quickly, you can always put oil on it and, and, that, and yeah, reproof it. Seals those it seals them back up. Mm -hmm. Reproof. Yes. Yeah. See, I didn't know that. Um, but so I lived in Africa for a good little while, and when we would get our eggs, um, they stayed on the counter because mm -hmm. we didn't have a refrigerator. Um, and we didn't wash them intentionally to leave the bloom, bloom on, on them so that they were on the counter and, and there. Yeah. So if, if, if someone decides that they don't want to wash eggs, the best thing you can do is you can get really clean eggs if you keep your, your cook clean, keep everything, everything clean, clean because mm -hmm. some of yep. them, you know, and you're checking it regularly, yes. you're not, yes. right. you know, and then yeah. at a minimum too, I would say probably that if there's, or maybe you just brush them off and do yeah. that. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. But ideally, and then we also, which I think we're out of, we do carry an egg, an egg wash. wash. It's ideal, right? Yes, yes. it is. Yeah, yeah, it's it's a it's by Manapro, and it is literally an egg wash, a cap full in a gallon of water, hot water, and you can just scrub it off. Mm -hmm. I put them, I put them on the counter edge, and yeah. then when they're dry, I put them in the boxes and yeah. put them in the fridge. That's awesome. There you go. <laughs> well, at our house, when you got six kids, well. Seven. Seven. Yeah, but, seven. <laughs> <laughs> but when you have that, I mean, egg, we go through eggs way fast. So, yeah. You know, and breakfast for us, uh, scrambled or omelets, or you know, your two dozen eggs just for that. And, uh, yeah. Go through it. Me well, too. We don't, we, don't, <laughs> we don't ever, we're not raising these birds to keep the eggs sitting around forever. No, no exactly. true. Commercial, yeah. commercial eggs sometimes can be upwards of 50 some odd days old by the time they come out of the refrigerator. You know, come out of come out of grocery process. store. Yeah, yeah. From grocery store. Yeah. Yes. So, so um, we were talking about yeah, wash to wash to not wash to whatever. Um, 
Oh man, I lost my train of thought now. I had a great question, and then it just went. I bet it was excellent. It was yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Now time for crazy jokes with Brian okay. while Jess thinks. Oh no. But um, yeah, so uh, trying to think other things that we should know and do with uh, with eggs um, since we're talking eggs. Um, any other key things we should know, or maybe we should let our customers know about eggs, or you know, like you said too. Um, uh, oh, I remember where I was going. Testing eggs. If oh. you don't check oh. your there you egg go. very often, or maybe you, Henrietta, got out and she decided to lay, you know, a whole bunch of eggs in the corner mm-hmm. somewhere. You know, you'd hate to waste all those. What's the best way to test those and check to make sure so you don't get float test? The yeah, float, yeah. Mm-hmm. Do the float test. Um, so if they float, they've got they've lost air out of the the mm-hmm. egg, and so they're older. They're older. Yeah. If they sink. You're good to go. You're good yep. to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And by float, you mean full float, like if they're standing on end or if they're it, whatever. They, yeah, they will, they will usually stand on yep. end because they've got a little air pocket. Anybody that's done um, hard-boiled eggs from the grocery mm-hmm. store, mm-hmm. when you crack them, they peel really easy, but there's a dimple, and mm-hmm. that tells you the age of the egg. So yep. a fresh yep. egg doesn't have that dimple, and they don't peel very easily. Right. <laughs> yeah. That is true. No, that is true. Hey, and a tip to peeling egg. I don't know if any of you guys have tips. There's all those kind of cool things, but we just always kind of crack. You can put, put them in a jar. Have you done that? You and boil shake. Them, like, put them in a jar, shake them as soon as they're right out, and you just peels off. Super. Nice. I haven't done I that. I haven't done that yet. Either. I do the little bit of baking soda in, in the, the boiling water. water. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 No, and who doesn't love a good boiled egg? Oh, yeah. So, yeah. so good. Yeah. Like, so good. We all have our own, or but a little deviled recipe. Eggs. This is extra. You get an extra recipe. <laughs> <laughs> But like when I do my boiled eggs, I, uh-huh. like I do, I put a like a table, a teaspoon, a tablespoon, or whatever of uh, baking soda. I don't know which one it is. To be honest, mm-hmm. it's like old fashioned, just you know. <laughs> so whatever that is, um, I put it in the water and have it boiling. And as soon as I start to see it boil, it's seven minutes, and then it's uh, pull it off the heat, and then I go over and run under cold water. I mean, you let them sit for just a little bit, run them under cold water, and then they crack super easy. And it's almost just perfect. Yeah. <laughs> So I let it boil, and then I take the second it starts boiling, I take it off the heat and put on a lid and wait thir- oh, wait 13 okay. minutes, and yeah. that gives me no like none of that little green. Yep, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so it's don't all that. yellow. That's, that's it's, it's perfect. Too yeah. hard boiled. Completely yeah, perfect. And that's the thing. I think but, a lot of people have done. You know, they overboil it. Right. Yep. But I eat my uh, hard boiled eggs in a way that everyone else in the world has told me is gross. So I don't think that I should share it. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> I am gonna be the. I I have like a hard boiled egg machine you know put it in oh, hit the button yeah. and walk away and it turns off by itself it's wonderful <laughs> you're one of those people that probably has one of those kitchen tools for everything i do not know? but for hard boiled eggs yes because okay. i have never been able to master the whole i've tried it your way jess i've tried it your way brian <laughs> i can never seem to quite get it right so i just bought the little the little deal and just that's, put it on that's really funny well but I, if i come down to it i guess my favorite are cast iron a cast iron pan ah. on low, a little uh, bacon grease in the bottom of there, and just a nice over easy egg on toast. Oh, can't beat that. Mine yeah. is probably baked into brownies. <laughs> <laughs> egg and cake for. Uh, I will tell you what, I just have learned my uh, sour cream mixed in to make scrambled eggs instead of milk, or you know, what? some people put water or milk when they're mm-hmm. making scrambled eggs. Uh-huh. Sour cream. Has changed my life. Oh, there you Interesting. Go. Yes. yes. I'm gonna try it. Well, we actually have some legitimate questions now. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> like you know, dinner time here. So Amy has a question. Any? Um, we talked about this a little bit ago, Amy. Um, but if you're just tuning in, we'd we'd happy to answer this. Any suggestions about a chicken bullying? I lost a chicken a couple weeks ago, and now all eight of my chickens are picking on just one. I don't think it's pecking order. They seem to push her away. So she, look at her real closely, watch her very, very closely. There might be something wrong there that you're not picking up one. Like if she's a little squatty, if she's a little extra puffed up, the other chickens might be sensing that she is ill in some way. Um, And if that's the case, so just watch her. And if that's the case, remove her and treat her separately. Um, And then when reintroducing her at night, scratch block out there make sure Something that busy. we can yeah. distract them as much as possible okay uh 
let's see. Stacy has a question. Oh, no, Stacy. Sorry. Yep. Thank you. She says, I've gotten all my girls from Coastal, and thank you, Stacy, <laughs> and uh, for shopping with us. Um, and while you're mentioning that, you know, if you ever have any concerns or issues or anything, you know, about your chicks, feel free to talk with uh, one of the managers, reach out to us, and uh, one of us will answer that. And all, all these feeds that we've talked about, and all feeds in general, not just uh, Cargill, Neutrina feeds. Um, Coastal, we stand by. We have a feed guarantee, what's called, and we stand behind that. So if there's ever anything wrong with your feed, um, it doesn't matter if you've fed this much or if you've fed down to only this much left in the bag, uh, we will take care of that for you. And we'll get you a new bag or we'll get you to try something different because um, we want you guys, you know, to be happy with the feed and be happy because if your birds are happy, you're happy and everyone's happy. Happy birds, happy eggs. Okay. Happy people. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, also, so, too. Oh, sorry. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. I just, I, that made me think of it. We are doing a contest on Facebook right now. Um, that made me think of it, the happy life. Um, so it is uh, called, it's a peep stakes. So if you want to submit your pictures, go on Neutrina Feeds uh, Facebook page. It'll have all the details. Um, we have this contest. I think, is it the last week we're on now? How I many weeks? I think it's the last week we're on now. So go to the Neutrina Feed um, Facebook page, like I said. Check out the Peep Stakes contest we have. Submit those pictures, and we would love to see them. And when so, you submit them, hashtag the good life. Yes. The good life. The so good if life. someone is uh, tuning in maybe later, when does this end, just so they know, so they're not looking for it? Right. I think it does end this week, which would be the first, where are we at? First week of April, second, <laughs> second week of April. Where are we at? I don't even April know what day. April 5th, 6th, something yes. like that. Yeah. Yes. So, I believe so, this week. Perfect. Okay, um, Stacy asks another question. How often should I put rooster booster, poultry cell, apple cider vinegar, and or garlic in their water, if at all? I've heard varying views. I'm not, I guess I'm not sure what, what that does. I'm, I'm not opposed to any of I mean, rooster booster is a supplement. Mm -hmm. um, so, you, apple cider vinegar will not hurt the bird. In fact, it balances the pH in the gut. So um, those are those are some of the things that you you don't have to really worry about. Good vitamin and electrolyte. You you're not going to overdo it by adding it to the water, and putting it in the feed. So prebiotics and probiotics and um, all these things don't hurt, especially if it birds in stress times of stress, mm -hmm. starting to lag, doing the mole whatever. Um, I I don't have a problem with any of those be products being used. Gotcha. Um, Kimberly Lanning asks a question, at what age should I offer a dust bath? So I'm assuming maybe that these <laughs> birds are, is there one dust bath? I totally right was going to say, <laughs> hey, we need to talk about this. I see your birds doing so, it. Um, I assume, I like, I mean, our birds, they get out and they have a, their favorite spot they like to go mm, and they have these little dust holes where they do that. Uh, but if not, then I guess we have some product that we can offer too. Yeah, you can put diatomaceous earth out and it is a natural lice mite removal system and it also doesn't hurt them if they preen themselves and ingest it because it uh, takes internal parasites out as well and it's all natural organic very safe to use make sure you're getting the feed grade varietals and no it, we actually it's all good uh, i'm amazed we have a blog article at on coastalcountry.com that talks about all the uses for diatomaceous earth and mm -hmm. we there's Tons of uses. I use it for as an organic pest control in my garden as well. Yep. Mm -hmm. You know, sprinkling it around, it yep. takes care of bugs don't like bugs it, don't handle especially it. slugs and stuff. They can't, it's like little shards of glass, they can't go across it and stuff. And then for internal parasites and stuff, as well as on cattle, external parasites and things, so it's, it's really good. It's a good product. But th as far as timing, mm -hmm. she could, as soon as they're feathered out and they go into the coop, I, I get put a little kids pool, one of those little kids oh, swimming pools yeah. in there, and dump a bag of DE in it, and they go and use it. They'll, they'll use my bark dust too, which yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's always where you well, don't want them. Yeah. Where, yeah. where they well, go, it's like oh, that's the best spot. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or like I've taken, as you said, your birds had picked their favorite spots, right? So I've taken DE and gone around and just added it to spots that I knew that they were already using and mm -hmm. then walked away because I was like, well, that's where you're going to go. And yeah. That's yeah. where you're going to go. Yeah. Yeah. A little more benefit then by using yeah. 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 Cool. Um, uh, Kelly Mack asked a question. Should my four-week-old gals have fine shavings or the larger ones? So I get really picky. Um, I like large shavings. Mm -hmm. 
I like big flakes and I cannot lie. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it, it's because the smaller flakes have this, the possibility of getting stuck and then blocking their nasal passages, which is just unnecessary. Yeah. And so I, I stick to big, big chunky flakes. Plus they fly around a lot easier and get into the water bowls and the feed bowls. Yep. It's yeah. super powdery versus yeah. a, a flake, a, you know, yeah. so, yeah. Um, some, I mean, I'm a horse person too. So like I sometimes like the little flakes because it's easy for me to clean. Yeah. But yeah. Um, in that brooder environment and stuff like that, in even a coop, it gets real dusty though, mm -hmm. uh, seems a lot. So like the bigger flakes tend to not be so dusty. Well, on flakes, so the only ones we should really avoid, like we said too, is, you know, we want to try to stick to like hardwood or right. whatever yep. those flakes. Pine shavings. Not use, Pine. Yep. Um, not cedar. cedar. No cedar. Yeah. No cedar. Because the oils and stuff in that cedar can cause issues and different Correct. things. Right. Yep. Um, so great question, Kelly. Um, Amy has another question. What do you suggest for ground cover in a coop run to help prevent mud? We have used straw, but it doesn't help as well as they'd hope. And that is, trust me, that's something I think everyone struggles <laughs> with. The, really, the only way, I mean, and unless you guys have some ideas too, is, you know, there's that old, I can't remember what it is. I wish I did now. Maybe one of you would, but, you know, grass will work in there as long as you don't over... Right. You know, it's it's a square footage thing. A chicken needs so many square feet, and if you have that, and they're not over congested, then then the grass will work, and they won't eat it down to mud or nothing. But unless it's covered, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> then, <laughs> then grass would not work <laughs> so well. Grass is not going to work yeah. so well. Um, but I also um, don't see a, a problem with using like a hog fuel or bark dust in a run, just to just kind of keep them up out of the mud because. Yeah. Just by proxy of what they do, birds they like to pick everything off. Mm -hmm. and, well, yeah. and and if you use hog fuel and stuff like that, it's gonna allow space for little bugs and worms and things mm -hmm. to run and another through. scratch over and get some little treats. Exactly. Whereas the bare ground won't. Yep. Right. So right. that's always nice to have. Yep. But no, that is one thing and especially if you have ducks like Oh. That is impossible to not. That's one of our, yeah. Yes. <laughs> we both just made the same point. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I know. Oh. Oh. They love ducks, but man, they make it muddy, mucky. Oh, they yeah. do. They do. They do. Oh. They do. They're, They're messy creatures. They, they are. Messy. But hilarious. Yes. Oh, yeah. Super They're, funny. They're cool. Yeah. 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 But, yeah. But no, yeah, she says it's covered and it's 10 by 20 foot run. And so, yeah, probably doing bark dust or something like that uh, would be good. Um, Man, I wish you guys don't remember what that square footage. And I think it's four. four okay, that's four, yeah. Yeah. four square like feet that. per, four bird. Feet per yeah. bird. Yep. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, but you need good established grass, like something like this. You can't. You couldn't just throw seed on there and then hope it come up because they'll eat all that. Yeah. They'll <laughs> have so much fun with the seed, though. Exactly. It'll be the most expensive bird treats you've ever bought. Exactly. <laughs> yes. Exactly. Yes. Okay. Well, thanks for that. Oh, and Gary said, yeah, use hay or straw. That works well uh, too, and that gives the you know bugs places to crawl around, and it's good for your soil as it breaks down as well. So, exactly. so let's see. We've talked about uh, some feed. We've talked about chickens. We've talked about eggs. We even threw a few good recipes in there. <laughs> boiling, hard boiled eggs, That's right. you know, uh, or brownies, whichever. <laughs> you like to yeah. eat your eggs. Um, but uh, maybe let's talk a little bit about, we've had a few questions on some different like diseases or different things like our sicknesses, illnesses, things that the birds can get. But what are some of the most common and what are some that maybe we should really watch for just to make sure there's, you know, no issues? Coccidiosis is the first one the first that one. comes to mind. Yep. Yep. Because it's, it's so prevalent, but you know, you, the, it gets harder to diagnose birds for like Merix or bacterial enteritis or aspergillus, which is inhaled uh, basically fungi um, so it's birds are kind of hard to diagnose yeah without with keeping them alive right well because they <laughs> yeah. like when they're sick they all kind of look the same right they all right. kind of puff up they keep their head down they stay by themselves yep and so right. you never really know what type of sick it is unless you take it to the vet and get, get multiple yep. testing done and things like that and it gets yep. complicated in coccidiosis you can tell in school, but most of the time, if you're seeing it in school, you are very you're, late in yeah, that late process. In process. And yeah. so that's not like it. It's nice to have an answer, but not nice to have an answer. If that makes <laughs> yeah. sense. Yeah, yeah, that's not the answer you want. Right. <laughs> that's that's exactly right. So yeah, those would be the main ones. So I know in the past we've had questions about worming chicks or deworming chicks, not worming. I mean. I mean <laughs>
<laughs> we were talking. Troy, don't, don't say. Know. Don't say anything bad. <laughs> Are we good, Troy? Can you can't. So we're sorry about that. We lost sound there for a second, and it helps that uh, the battery backup didn't work. So oh, we had to nice. Fix that. So sorry about that, guys. You didn't want to hear what we had to say anyway. <laughs> Bad jokes from Ryan and those are great jokes, sir. Yeah, oh, well. Hot, highest quality. Highest quality jokes. That's not a very high quality. No, I mean, <laughs> You're calling foul. I know. Oh, oh, oh but there I'm dumb. There we go. Like I said. <laughs> oh shoot. Um. So uh, Tracy had a uh, question about what kind of bark dust to use, um, like we were referring to earlier. And really, um, if we're talking about in the run and stuff, that can really be any bark dust. Just to try to avoid anything that's too fine or cedar. Correct. Anything yep. I got with oils in it yep. that could yep. um, not be beneficial to the chicken. Yeah. Yep. Hopefully. And one thing, Jess, I'm not sure if we've covered really in depth yet, is treats. We've talked about scratch. We've yes. talked about, no, like, why why treats and, like, the high protein. But I think we should cover, like, you know, some good treat options. Yeah. Um, I mean, I know Coastal has the, – the chicken aisle is getting bigger and bigger it every is. year, it right? Is. Yes. And treats and what you can do. Um, I know a really good go-to not only is scratch, uh, but these mealworms are also – a fan favorite, oh, yep, okay. um, but those are a great uh, protein source as well for your uh, for your chickens. But definitely mm -hmm. scratch. I just want to reiterate, it should be not more than 10% of the chicken's diet, unless you are cutting it with the high protein feed, like we said earlier. But um, I don't know about you guys, but my girls love watermelon. Like that is oh, their go-to. Like they will knock me over <laughs> on the way home. Like if I get out of my car with a watermelon in the summer, like. They're all about watermelon. So um, I know like, you know, giving them treats is good. Um, you know, pumpkins and things like that. Just making yeah. sure. But like, do you guys have any other recommendations? Oh, there's, yeah, they, these guys carry a full line of <laughs> yes. uh, pull it together. They've got all kinds of different assorted treats with, with black oil and seeds and mm -hmm. I don't know, sort well, of yeah, and then the grubs uh, and grubs and mm -hmm. the mealworms, mealworms and, yes. and mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff too. It's, yes. Yeah. yeah. And definitely too with chicks. So I know some people want to give chicks treats. Um, making sure that you, we recommend not doing it. Yeah. Right. Um, right. Just keep no. them on a chick starter until it's time to go to a layer feed. And then when that time is there and you're going to do treats, make sure you have grit available. Right. Um, they need yes. that to chew, which is little tiny rocks, uh, essentially. So if you do see, if you're free ranging, if you see your hen out there and she eats a pebble, um, it's okay. Um, yep. That is that is normal. <laughs> she does need that. Um, but making sure you're making sure they have that available to them before you're giving them any sort of treats besides um, their layer feed or chick starter. Yep, absolutely. You know, the, the old adage, rare as hen's teeth. They're, they don't have any. So we do have to give them the grit because they, it, their gizzard works to grind down the food particles and get them through into the gut. So it's, an, it's kind of a necessary thing if you're going to feed anything besides yep. your formulated feeds. So is there any foods or things we should avoid? With, with, you know, don't giving, you know, like household foods or things like that that we shouldn't be given. Avocados is a big no-no. Yep. Oh, onions, onions are not good for them also. Um, they'll pick at tomato leaves, potato leaves, which is probably not the best idea either because potato leaves have oxalic acid in it and it attacks the liver. So that's not necessarily a good, good program. Same with potato peels, peels. if it's a green yep. potato peel. Yes. Yep. Yeah. Exactly. Um, the uh, cigarette butts. <laughs> Chickens will pick up anything. Oh yeah, that's yeah. real. Rock Don't salt. Smoke by your chicken pen if you smoke. Yeah. Rock salt is bad for them if you're uh, in the winter. If you're mm -hmm. putting it out to melt oh, snow or ice, okay. They'll pick at it because it's chickens are chickens have no sense of taste, no sense of smell, but they're visual. They're, mm -hmm. any, they yep. key in on something that looks different, and they're all over it. So that's probably why mealworms dress up very well. Right. Yeah. <laughs> they look odd. Yes. Yeah, I know. They do. It's funny that they know. Yeah. Uh, they know. Like, well, that's what the girls were scratching around here yeah. for earlier. We threw yes. a few mealworms and they uh, go to town on them. If you yeah. ever are like short on entertainment, uh, chicken TV is very real. And I recommend one to two spaghetti noodles that have been cooked because uh, <laughs> the fight that you will see. One, <laughs> It's a worm and, oh, and the other one. thing, and then everyone's trying to take him down. It's like football, there it's a great go. time. Your own YouTube channel. Yeah. Oh. Eating chickens pasta. Yes. Oh, funny. I'm I'm not a big fan of feeding them tomatoes because that can force the molt too. 
the, oh, the, it's um, you know a lot of times people it kind of ties in time wise I guess is what I would say but at the end of the summer season you're tired of everything yeah, in the garden and, and you, you open the fence and there. then they start to molt and then they go off oh. laying and mm -hmm. whatnot so that's good to know yeah oh cool well we have sure covered a wide range of topics tonight and I mean, is there anything else you guys think of in closing that you'd want to say to help encourage people with their chickens or, or a little tip that you have or anything like that? Don't uh, get discouraged about anything. Do it. Yeah. Just do it. Yeah. Have fun. Yeah, it's fun. It's, it's and that's chickens what, are pets. They're yeah. supposed to be a family yeah. fun. Um, I know Jess, just being around you for the last couple hours, you have your yeah. family of now seven. Yeah. <laughs> um, just seeing what they've done, you know, with the chickens and the hens is, is key. That's It's a family fun. They're great to have. And um, yeah, don't get discouraged. And um, always buy a couple extra chicks when you go get some. Yeah. Because um, you, yeah, you can't you have too know. many. You yeah. never know. <laughs> but always check with your Sydney or city of uh, rules, yes. though, yes. that it's, first. Yeah. Make sure if you can have a rooster or anything like that. Uh, we don't want you guys coming back to Coastal saying we sent you home with too many. So, <laughs> uh, but yeah, definitely they're great fun animals to have. Nope. Yeah, they are. They're a lot of fun, and they, like you said, they all have such personalities and everything else. It's fun to watch them, and they're hilarious at times. They are. You know? They are. <laughs> So, yeah, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, we hope we answered all those questions. If you have some more questions and you're watching this later, please just comment and we will respond to those. Uh, either co questions geared toward us at Coastal, um, questions towards the neutrino with the feed, questions for Darcy on anything. She's the poultry queen. Um, you know, we will uh, try to get those answered as quickly as we can. Um, but one, yeah, one last couple plugs here at the end is we have a lot of great information, uh, videos, past videos that we've done like this, um, blog articles, um, papers, different things on raising chickens, building coops, um, processing birds, I mean, all kinds of things and a lot of recipes. Just check out coastalcountry.com slash blog and you'll find those or find it on our YouTube channel. Um, don't want to forget the plaid perch program with Neutrina. All this feed that you can that you buy uh, when you get it, um, you can earn rewards and right. so, win stuff and get stuff. You know, <laughs> PlaidPerks.com. Uh, take a, upload a picture of your receipt, and you get a specific amount of points based off of what you spent. Uh, that's Neutrina branded, yep. um, and you can use those points to redeem coupons or hats or jackets or a mini fridge that I have my eye on. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> there's, a, there's a lot of perks from Plaid Perks and yeah. there's, yeah, great endless possibilities. So but it's, a, it's a great kind of a new form of the frequent buyer program that we used to have for a lot of years. And if you have chickens and I mean a lot of other animals, you know, you might be buying a couple bags a week and so those, those peep perks the perk. <laughs> Don't worry folks, we're almost done. You won't have to put up with this. <laughs> jokes anymore. They're just flocking to this. <laughs> oh boy, it started. Darcy, don't Woo! again with me. It's no. <laughs> These are my peeps. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think it's time to go. So. <laughs> no, thank you, Annie and Darcy and Brian for being here. Thank you guys for tuning in, for putting up with our uh, <laughs> really bad jokes. And I hope you guys learned something tonight. And like they said, you know what? It's fun it's educational don't get frustrated if something, something doesn't work right or if your chicken lose all its feathers you know uh, it's just part of the cycle and we're here to help with any questions so thank you guys and we'll see you next time thank, thank you. you thank you